Hello everyone. This is a tutorial on how to make a memory wire bracelet. This is a very quick and easy project, so this is perfect, especially for beginners. Before I show you what you will need for this, let me just quickly show you a couple of memory wire bracelets that I've made so that you can see what kind of stuff you can make. Remember, you can make these in many different styles. It all depends on the beads that you're using. Like in here, I have my newest one, which is a very chunky, big um, bracelet. And I've just used different pink glass beads in this one. And it also has a Swarovski crystal at both ends of the bracelet. So that's a big and chunky one. And then I have these kind of little smaller ones, or actually they're the same size of wire, but they use smaller beads. So that gives a different look to them. And this one is one that I use a lot during the summer because it's so kind of pretty and dainty. And I think it suits summer very well. And all in all, these memory wire bracelets are perfect for summer because you use a lot of shorter sleeves in the summer. So you have more space to put on these. This one is also a summery thing that I use a lot in the summer. It has different sized um, glass pearls and also Swarovski's at the end. You don't have to use a lot of coils though. This one only has like one, a little bit more than one coil. And I've used um, these crystals and also some Swarovski beads in there, crystals. And it has these metal discs in between the beads as well. And it does have the dangly little crystals, Swarovski's at the end as well. And these ones are my ethnic ones, which I use a lot in the summer. So just this one has a lot of coils and uh, this one has a little bit less, but just various small beads that I've strung onto these. And they also, by the way, have danglers. This one has this sort of dangler, let's see, and, and this sort of dang dangler. And this one has this and um, there's the other end, that. So lots of different styles that you can make with this technique. So let me start off by showing you what you need for this project. So what you will need for this project is obviously memory wire. Here I have two sizes. This one is the necklace size and this is the bracelet size. There is also a ring size, so you can use that too if you want to. Um, but we're going to be making a bracelet. But the technique is the same, so if you want to make a necklace instead, please do. Okay, so here is the memory wire. And the one thing you really need to know about memory wire is that it's hard. It's hardened wire, so it keeps its shape, looks like a slinky. And, uh, you know, if you pull it like this, it just returns back to its shape. And because it's so hard, cutting it can be a bit problematic. Um, there are special memory wire cutters that you can get from craft stores. I don't have those. So what I use and what you can also use if you don't have memory wire cutters is just an old pair of regular cutting pliers. When I say old, I mean not your best pair because memory wire is so hard that it can dent your pliers. And um, that's why you don't want to ruin your best pliers in memory wire. And this is an old pair of um, cutting pliers that I don't really use anymore. So I just use it for cutting memory wire. You will also need round nose pliers and you need a sturdy pair here when you're working with memory wire. And what I mean with sturdy is, let me show you another pair that I have. Just compare the sizes of the noses in these two. These are much bigger and they are much thicker. That, that's what I mean when I say sturdy, because this is so hard that it's easier to curl it with a bigger, sturdier pair of, of um, pliers. So that's why you need a sturdy pair. So these are basically the tools that you will need for working with memory wire. And if you want to, you can also use tubing in your memory wire. Tubing is looks something like this and it comes in different designs and colors and all that, but it's just a hollow tubing. There's a hole in there. And the way that you use this is that you can either, uh, you just slip it in there, just start putting it in there like that. And what you can do is you can cover your whole bracelet with this if you want to. But of course, that might look a little bit boring. 
unless you cut the tubing and just use little sections of it and then put some beads in there. So you can use this as well in your memory wire and you can get this in craft stores. I'm not going to be using this today, but I just wanted to give you the hint that this one exists as well. So, of course, you're going to need beads for making your memory wire bracelet. And I have here a box of beads that I call my thousand and one night beads because the coloring is pretty ethnic. I've combined in here beads that have like browns and golds and pinks. Um, there's also some blue and green ones in here. But I think that these kind of suit together pretty nicely. So I'm going to make a bracelet using these beads. Now you, of course, can use any beads you want to. The only thing that I would um, advise you against if you're a beginner is using very big beads. For example, I have these beautiful ceramic beads in here, but these are pretty big. So they're going to leave kind of big gaps in your, in your um, bracelet. So I would suggest you use smaller beads in your first bracelet at, at least. But then you can, of course, try and experiment with different kinds of beads that you like. Okay, so now you know what you need, so let's get on to the actual making of the bracelet. Start your bracelet off by deciding how many coils you want in your bracelet. I would advise against going with an awful lot of coils for the simple reason that you need a lot of beads if you have a lot of coils. Even one of these coils takes quite a few beads into it, so keep that in mind. If you're a beginner, I would suggest going maybe three four coils and even that amount takes quite a lot of beads. So I'm going to be cutting about three coils here and I always like to cut from the same spot than where I my coil, coil ends here. So that means that I'm not going to cut it from here or back here. I'm just going to cut it in a straight line from this one. So let me pick my coils. There's three coils in there. So I'm going to cut it approximately there and you might need to use quite a bit of strength here power here if you don't have memory wire cutters because um, there we go because this is really pretty um, hard wire so now I have cut my wire and the next step then is to be using these round nose pliers to make a little loop at one of the ends of this um, coil just make sure that my coil is cleared out and uh, okay we're having a bit of a snag there but this is pretty easy to um, figure out still have a little bit of a um, snag I'm glad this came out because this can happen just keep pulling them apart until you are um, it looks like this so there are no snags anywhere so pick one of the ends, it doesn't really matter which one, but you just need to have something here at the end so that when you start putting on the beads, they won't fall off. And here you need the sturdy um, pair of pliers because this is hard wire and it takes a little bit of strength to do, to do it. And you're going to make a little loop here at the end to act as a stopper for the beads. And you can choose the... Um, like the size of the loop based on your plier. If you want a huge loop, then use the very um, bottom here of your pliers because that will make a bigger loop. And if you want a very small loop, then use the very tip because that makes small loops. Now I'm going to be um, um, using something like that. So just start coiling it like that. And remember, it might take a little bit of strength because this is hard. Just keep bringing it forth until you have a um, loop there that's um, closed off. And if it if it um, if it's not even, you can always work on it a bit more. But now I have a loop there, so now I can start actually stringing my beads onto it, and they won't fall off from the end. And stringing the beads, well, obviously you just string the beads. There's really not more. <clears throat> to it than just putting on the beads and I find that the best way to do this is just dip into your beads and not even look at what you're putting in <clears throat> so I'm just starting to put on my beads into this 
and of course since I have um, about three coils I think in here yeah so this is going to take a little amount of time so I'm not going to make you watch me um, put on all the beads I'm just going to put in a few beads here that, so that you can get a, a good look into how it's done but this is like super easy super super easy um, bracelet or necklace and the necklace of course you do it the same way so I'm just stringing my beads here and I'll continue doing this and I'll come back to you once I've strung enough beads but I'm just gonna show you before I continue just gonna show you how you can um, how this goes so just you can put this back here and they will stop when you get to the loop there we go so now they are here at the very end and I will continue putting on new beads until I have um, filled this bracelet and then I'll okay so here we go now I have filled my bracelet with beads and I did end up choosing my beads after all so I changed the beads a bit from what you saw me put in there um, I really do like this look I think it's very eclectic very kind of um, you know Middle Eastern very very quirky and wonderful so I really do love this and uh, now I'm at the end and I have a little bit over a centimeter left of wire here and we don't need a clasp with memory wire which is a wonderful thing absolutely great especially for beginners who might not really have a lot of beading supplies now I always put a bead that's a little bit tight here at the end um, this one is a pearl a freshwater pearl and it is very kind of tight to move in there and it was tight to get in there but the reason why I put it in the end is because as I'm making the loop here uh, if I have very loose beads here they will just flop off from here so this kind of keeps them in there and I also make sure that I don't have any gaps in here I've gone through this bracelet and I also do it this way here at the end I have my sturdy round nose pliers and I grip the wire here at the end and then I just push back or pull back whichever word it is um, so that I make sure that they are snug and tight in there and then I just need to make another loop here at the end and I always find this a little bit tricky so um, if you find it tricky then don't worry I find it tricky too um, because I kind of never know exactly uh, how much and how big um, how much of wire to leave and how big um, a loop to make but let's just let's just try something you know that's what I often do when I make jewelry I just try things so there we go and you need to be sure that you really close off the loop like this because uh, we're going to put in a dangle and if you don't close it then the dangle will come off um, okay so that seems fine yep and I already have the dangle here at the other end and you don't have to make this dangle but I really love the dangles and I think they fit very well with this uh, style of bracelet so that's why I'm making one and I'm showing you how to now if you want a a more detailed tutorial on how to make wire wrapped jewelry then check out that tutorial on my channel it is there um, but I'm just going to show you pretty quickly how to do this so what you need is a head pin a head pin is a pin that sort of like has like a nail end and you need to put in some beads a couple of beads is enough that you like and that um, fit with your bracelet for some reason it's not sharpening now anyway so there we go I have these two beads and I have both beads actually in my bracelet as well and I'm going to be using a smaller pair of round nose pliers because these are pretty big and I don't like to use them when I make wrapped loops so we're making a wrapped loop and I'm grabbing or gripping actually <laughs> this um, tightly on top of the beads uh, with my pliers and then I just push the pin back so that it goes like horizontally there I reposition my pliers like this and I bring it on over like that to the front reposition again to be horizontal and just pull it from underneath there like that let go and as you can see it's forming it does have a bit of space there and it needs to have a little bit of space because you want to 
be able to put it on to your loop here. So just sliding that on there. And then I will take my um, chain nose pliers and I'm gripping this, this uh, loop here very tightly. And then I just wrap, wrap this, um, the rest of the pin around the pin. Okay. Sometimes the wrapping is a bit hard and it won't go very tightly, but um, you can always redo this part. Okay, and I need to take my real cutting pliers here to cut off the rest. There we go. And then I need to take again my chain nose pliers to tuck in this little bit here because it might actually um, kind of like poke you because it can be a little bit sharp. And in here, you need to be careful so that you're actually tucking in only the um, sort of like the metal and not the bead. I have bust many beads like this when I've been actually doing this on the bead. Okay, so there we go. And my bracelet is now done. And these are wonderful bracelets because they are easy to put on, they're easy to make, they are quick to make, and they can be really pretty if you choose the right beads. And... Um, if you have any questions about making these memory wire, wire bracelets and necklaces, please leave me a comment and I'll reply. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye!